Hello everyone, it's me, the RetroDan, and today I'm here to do just as I promised in my last video, where I talked about the probable nominees I thought would be nominated for the Game of the Year awards this year, and today I'm here to vote on the on all the categories because they were just announced live at the Game Awards YouTube channel, so now I think it's time to vote. So starting off with the last category, we're starting from the end because we are going to build up all the way to the Game of the Year. I'm going to vote for EVO 2023 as I think the fighting game events are always the best and it's going to stay that way. Uh, I, I think these events are also really good if you like team games, but I think they don't beat the show of the single player fighting games where you play 1v1 and it's much more intense, but that's my opinion. So, moving on to best esports coach. I'm actually not gonna vote for this category because I know I know nothing about this category, so I'm not gonna vote for it. For best esports team, it's basically the same. I didn't follow esports this year, I haven't played any team competitive games in a long time, so I'm not going to vote for this as well. Now, actually for best esports athlete, I'm going to vote Faker because, I mean, it's Faker. You have to vote for Faker whenever you see him. He made a mark on esports and he still does for all these years, so this is what I'm going to pick for this category, but don't take it as uh, he, he was the best esports player of the year because I actually didn't watch that much of League of Legends. What I watched was all national, on the national side of esports, so let's move on to the next category. Moving on to the best esports game, I think I will have to give it to League of Legends, that this is the game that somehow is still alive. I think this category could have been better, I don't know why PUBG Mobile is here. I, it's not me hating mobile games, but I'm not sure why they put PUBG Mobile in a place where something like Apex Legends could be, but let's move on. Now for Content Creator of the Year, I would vote me, but that's not an option. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to be really honest with y'all, I don't watch any of these people. Some of them I have no clue who they are, so this is one I didn't want to skip, but I'm actually going to skip because I have no clue who these people are. I'm betting they have some good content, but I'm not willing to vote on something I actually don't know anything about. So, yeah, I think this is turning out to be pretty bad this year, and that's my honest opinion. I'm going to make another video reflecting on what the nominations were this year, but I'm not going to vote for this as well. Now, for most anticipated game, this was a very good category with a lot of amazing games. But I have to be honest, I already know what I'm going to vote. There's Tekken 8, which is looking pretty good. Yakuza Like a Dragon, I haven't played the original one, so I wouldn't vote for it. I didn't play Hades as well. As some people who have watched this channel for a long time know, I am a huge Star Wars fan, so I'm very hyped for Star Wars Outlaws, but I think here Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is who's going to win, because it's Final Fantasy VII, everyone was hyped for the remake, everyone is hyped for the rebirth we have been getting, a lot of trailers ever since it was announced that it was going to be a trilogy, so I think this one is going to take the cake because it's Final Fantasy, come on. Moving on to Best Adaptation, this was another one that was actually snubbed because the FNAF movie, which just came out and was a huge success in cinemas, despite the quality of the actual movie, which is debatable, wasn't nominated. I don't like The Last of Us, I didn't watch any of the, of the other ones, so I'm gonna give this vote to Super Mario Bros. the movie. Now for Best Multiplayer, we have Baldur's Gate, Diablo 4, Party Animals, Street Fighter 6, and Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Now, Diablo 4, multiplayer game with a single player aspect. I don't care what you think about it, I, I think Diablo 4 has a single player aspect more to it than the multiplayer thing. Baldur's Gate 3, I'm not sure how even the game is multiplayer, I didn't play it, uh, despite me thinking it will win game of the year. Uh, party Animals is a fun party game, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, it's a couch co-op game, so I'm going to vote for the game I actually played and enjoyed, which was Street Fighter 6. Now to best esports and racing games, it's very hard to vote for this because, uh, come on, FIFA is here again, now EAFC, F1, these games are also always the same thing, Hot Wheels and the crew, but we have, if we have to go for technical improvements and what game plays the best, I'm going to vote for Forza Motorsport, the game looks amazing. It's the release modes look fantastic, the work that was put into it. Uh, so yeah, this is my vote for this category. Not much until now, because these categories are actually pretty bland, if I had to say, but it gets better from now on. For best sim strategy game, another category in which I'm not very well versed in because I don't play many of these games. I didn't play any of these actually, but I'm happy for the Pikmin franchise to be back. I know Advanced Wars franchise was also back, but this is only a remaster. I'm, I'm pushing for games that actually got a new entry, so I'm going to vote for Pikmin here. Now, for best family game, 
this is a hard category. Despite Disney Illusion being here and I have no clue what this game is, there are a lot of good games here. But family game. Pikmin, I don't think it's really a family game. It's actually a ver very niche uh, saga from Nintendo, even though it just got a new entry. I don't think many people even knew about Pikmin if you were like... 12 years old or or younger or even up to 15 years old you probably never played a pikmin game sonic superstars i don't know how to feel about this game super mario bros wonder sold really well and party animals is an indie title which is really charming and looks really fun to play with friends so despite all these games all these three games in the end being very high quality top tier games i think party animals deserves to take the win on this best family category now, for best fighting game, I'm going to be completely biased and I'm not even going to uh, discuss what the winner is going to be for this category. I know Mortal Kombat 1 made an impact, these other games didn't even deserve to be nominated because the true fighting game category is only between Mortal Kombat 1 and, Mo and Street Fighter 6, and for me, Street Fighter 6 takes fighting game of the year, no discussion. So yeah, I got a little interrupted because the site is crashing, everyone is trying to vote, but best RPG category, this one is also really hard to vote for, all amazing games right here, despite whatever you want to say or hate on Starfield, but my vote here, I know everyone's going to vote for Baldur's Gate 3 or Final Fantasy 16, but I would like to see Sea of Stars get it, and keeping that in mind, I'm actually not going to vote for Sea of Stars, I'm going to vote for Final Fantasy 16, I think the work they put in was amazing, and I think... Sea of Stars deserves to win another category this year, and why I'm not voting in it for this category in specific. Moving on to Best Action Adventure, I'm going to be completely biased. Since I already have plans to vote on the Tears of the Kingdom for other categories, I'm going to give this one to Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I think it deserves to win some prizes, the performances from Cameron Monaghan as Calcasties are peak as always, and the game feels really good to play, even though I am yet to finish it, which is something we're not gonna mention. For a lot of these games. Now for best action game. The true competitors here are only Hi-Fi Rush and Armored Core 6. Even though Hi-Fi Rush was a huge surprise I'm going to give this one to Armored Core 6. A revival of a franchise the game felt really good to play. I watched a friend of mine play it from start to finish and I loved watching. I can't even imagine what it feels like playing. I've tried the game out if only for a little bit but I think as a mecha, it would be really good if it won, because it meant we could get more games in the genre, which we definitely need. Now, for a best VR AR, some category I'm actually going to skip, because I don't have a way to play VR games and I'm not really interested in them. They feel, they feel or sound like a headache to set up and play, so let's skip this one. For best mobile game, I'm actually not going to vote as well, because I know none of these games and the only mobile game I actually played this year was Dokkan. Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, so I'm not going to vote for this category as well, and wow, this is starting to become kind of a trend. Best Debut Indie Game. So we have Cocoon, Dredge, Pizza Tower, Venba and Viewfinder, and I'm going to give it to Pizza Tower. On second place I would give it to Dredge, but I think Pizza Tower has really unique art style, very good sound design, very good level design and very responsive and good gameplay, so I think it deserves to win at least one prize. Now for Best Independent Game, this is where this category has actually a lot of good games. I know Cocoon because I saw Donkey talk about it. I know Dave the Diver because this is a game I've been eager to play. I really want to play Dave the Diver, but I'm waiting for it to come out on PlayStation. Dredge, really good Lovecraftian game, really good atmosphere and interesting gameplay mechanics. But, uh, and actually Viewfinder, which was announced last year at the Game Awards, which I, I haven't played or seen anything about it. But I'm going to give it to Sea of Stars. If you watched my videos in the last three to four months you know i'm addicted to turn-based rpgs so this is going to be my peak this was going to be my peak i thought it was going to get nominated for game of the year it didn't so i think it should win best independent game of the year best community supports uh here i have no doubt about what i'm going to vote for as well no man's sky the game that managed to become a failure at launch and become a huge success years after they are still putting huge work into the expansions for no man's sky the gameplay feels good the game has a lot of content so i think it deserves to win at least this prize uh if it had been nominated for multiplayer game i'm not sure if i would have voted it voted for it as well but at least give it best community support as it's an ongoing game that has been getting a lot of attention best ongoing game not sure why cyberpunk 2077 is here because cyberpunk only is a 
ongoing game because it sucked at launch and it had to be fixed. Uh, otherwise, Fortnite recency bias here might give it a lot of votes because of the OG Fortnite update. Apex Legends, I haven't heard from it in a while, even though I was a huge Apex Legends player. Final Fantasy XIV, it's Final Fantasy XIV, and Genshin. I think these are the two main contenders here, but I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it for... I'm going to give it to Final Fantasy XIV because I hate gacha games, even though I said I played Dokken, I don't spend money on microtransactions, so I'm going to give it to Final Fantasy XIV, which is uh, an MMO, and I think it deserves it. Now, Games for Impact, another category which I know absolutely nothing about. I, I think for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social pro meaning or message, I'm not sure what they intend with this category, I don't know any of these games, so not gonna vote for it. Innovation in accessibility, that being said, uh, the only accessibility feature I know that was added here were the new controls in Street Fighter 6, which I hated. I'm not sure what the other games did for accessibility. Uh, but I know this is for people who have certain disabilities and they have some trouble playing some games. So I'm not sure how I, a person with no difficulties or accessibility needs, would vote for a category like this. So I'm going to skip this one out of respect for people who actually are intended to vote for this category. Best performance. Now, this one, totally not biased as well as you guys uh, might understand. Cameron Monaghan, I loved him in Shameless, I loved him in Star Wars, and I'm going to keep loving him if they do another Star Wars game, so this is going to be my vote. But, that being said, I think Ben Star from Final Fantasy XVI as Clive also deserve it, and Idris Elba uh, played a good role in Cyberpunk, so these three would be the main ones. And Peter Parker as well. Because, come on, it's Peter Parker, even though they ruined his face model, the voice acting is fun and good. He has some good quips. Best audio design. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush, hands down. Uh, really good audio design that fits and mixes into the gameplay. So I think it's, it's a given that this one should win best audio design. Best score and music. This year for me is between Final Fantasy XVI and Tears of the Kingdom, because I love the Tears of the Kingdom soundtrack, even though it was kind of a remake from the Breath of the Wild soundtrack. But Final Fantasy XVI as something that's completely new and for orchestral composition and new uh, authentic themes to the Final Fantasy franchise, I think there, there were some iconic additions like Find the Flame. So this is going to be my pick for best score and music for this year. Best Art Direction. Uh, Alan Wake 2, no clue about the game. Hi-Fi Rush, huge contender. And Tears of the Kingdom, huge contender for me. Super Mario Bros. Wonder changed a little bit of the art style. So... I don't think it really deserves a vote, as it's it's still Mario, it didn't innovate a lot uh, when it comes to the art style. In other areas, it definitely in innovated or improved on the standard Mario 2D genre, but I'm also going to have to give this to Hi-Fi Rush. Something from, from the creators of The Evil Within, which, which we were never expecting, so I think this would be the optimal pick for this category. Best Narrative. Uh, Kinda hard to vote. I didn't play any of these. I know the narrative for all of them, except Final Fantasy XVI, which I'm kind of tiptoeing around because I really want to play it. So, like every vote in this in these categories, I'm going to be biased, and I'm also going to vote for Final Fantasy XVI. Now, for the last two categories, and I'm noticing we're missing a lot uh, up there, but these are the main two categories which we are going to... Uh, see being voted for and complained about so these are the most important ones so for best game direction we have alan wake 2 baldur's gate 3 marvel spider-man 2 super mario bros wonder and legend of zelda tears of the kingdom i have no clue why alan wake was nominated for so many categories i know absolutely nothing about this game i think just for the fact of it being an epic games exclusive and digital only game it should be uh, snubbed out of many categories because i think it's anti-consumer uh, those are anti-consumer practices, and I think uh, I'm not pro-boycotting games on the Game Awards, but I, I know nothing about Alan Wake 2. I know that they changed the gameplay from the original Alan Wake to fit more into the survival horror genre and look, look and play more like a Resident Evil game. So I think, in a sense, they innovated on the franchise itself, but they downgraded the gameplay style uh, because they made it move away from something that was unique. Uh, and despite it being old, the original Alan Wake gameplay was unique, uh, and they moved it to look something more like a Resident Evil game. Uh, so, 
that being said, Baldur's Gate 3 revival of a great franchise with amazing direction and it proved to be amazing direction because the game reached to a huge audience outside of the CRPG scope and Tears of the Kingdom. Since I already know what I'm going to vote for game of the year, I'm going to give the best game direction to Baldur's Gate 3. They did an amazing, amazing job. Larian Studios is cementing them, themselves as an household studio for the Game Awards in the future if they drop another game because this game had so much success I think their other projects for the future are given immediate success if they put out something as good as Baldur's Gate 3. And for Game of the Year, I hit 4 out of 6 predictions in my last video if you guys saw my predictions for Game of the Year and we have Alan Wake T 2, same reasons as for why I didn't think it deserved game best game direction, Baldur's Gate 3, Marvel Spider-Man 2, RE4, Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and come on, you know me, huge Zelda fan, huge Breath of the Wild fan, you, you've seen my video on Tears of the Kingdom where I said it was going to be my personal game of the year, so yeah, that's it. Tears of the Kingdom is my personal game of the year, feel free to judge me, I still think Baldur's Gate is going to win game of the year this year and I'm not going to be mad if it does because it was much deserved. But if I had to choose a game in which I put more time, I got really addicted to, had a lot of fun and was expecting to be my personal game of the year, it has to be Tears of the Kingdom. So basically these are all the categories, this was all I voted for, the reasons for which I didn't vote in some of these categories are pretty well stated. Uh, this was kind of a freestyled video because I'm doing this before going to class and this just came out and the nominees were just announced. Feel free to drop all your vote or votes in the comments. I want to know what you guys voted on. I also want to know uh, what you think about my votes. Feel free to hate on me. These are my personal votes. Everyone's allowed to express their opinion in this uh, Game Awards uh, time of the year. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to subscribe and like. I know this is this is just a freestyle video because I wanted to put this out as quickly as possible for algorithm reasons, of course. But yeah, this has been the Retro Den, and I'm out.